Welcome back to another exciting video of Top Movies Recap. Today I am going to explain a 1999 American supernatural horror thriller film called The Sixth Sense. If you want to know what the film is really about, then ignore that sudden chill and pay no attention to the bloody woman right behind you. Instead, let's dive into the story of The Sixth Sense and figure out what's happening in Shyamalan's modern masterpiece. But before we start, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel to get some interesting stuff in upcoming videos. Malcolm Crow, a child psychologist in Philadelphia, returns home one night with his wife, Anna, after having been honored for his work. Anna tells Crow that everything is second to his work and that she believes he is truly gifted. A young man then appears in their bathroom and accuses Crow of failing him. Crow recognizes him as Vincent Gray, a former patient whom he treated as a child for hallucinations. Vincent shoots his former doctor before killing himself. After Malcolm takes a bullet to the belly, we jump forward to the next fall, where he seems to have recovered. Seems is the key word here. He's sitting on a bench, poring over a notebook and waiting for his new patient, Cole Sear, an isolated nine-year-old who suffers from a possible mood disorder. But when the adorable Cole spots Malcolm, the kid immediately looks away and goes full using Bolt, sprinting for a nearby church. Malcolm finds his little patient hiding between the pews, whispering a prayer. The doctor takes a seat and apologizes for missing an earlier appointment, but the kid doesn't react. Cole is incredibly nervous around Malcolm, maybe because he knows something about this guy we don't. Hint, hint. Fortunately, Malcolm is really good with kids and gets Cole to relax, but as they're starting to connect, he notices the boy has some nasty scratches on his arm. With his mysterious wounds and paranoid behavior, Cole reminds Malcolm of a whole lot of Vincent, the kid he couldn't help. Haunted by his failure, the good doctor is compelled to save Cole and right the wrongs of his past. Of course, getting inside Cole's head is going to be a challenge, and as their impromptu meeting comes to an end, Malcolm sees Cole snatch a religious icon from the front of the church. It seems Cole has a strong affinity for Catholicism, even if he isn't big on the whole thou shall not seal thing. So, who exactly is Cole Seer? Well, he's an odd little boy with some very uncanny abilities. He knows things that a nine-year-old shouldn't know, like the fact his school was once a courthouse where innocents were hanged, and that his history teacher had a major stuttering problem when he was a boy. It's almost like someone very old is giving him information about the past. Cole also practices free association writing, and the stuff he jots down is incredibly violent and disturbing. But is this coming from his mind, or is it something he heard from an especially angry soul? Regardless, the kid has some sort of dark secret that leaves him shaking in fear at night. Something so horrible he won't even tell his mom, Lynn. She's a hard-working single mother whose life is falling apart. Her husband recently ditched her. She's struggling with the death of her mom, and her son is clearly troubled. Plus, she's dealing with a lot of weird stuff around the house. Rooms get chilly without explanation. Doors and cabinets keep opening, seemingly on their own. And if that wasn't weird enough, Lynn notices strange glowing lights in every photograph of Cole. It's almost like there's something supernatural hovering near his shoulder, and it's starting to feel like this boy is haunted by something besides a mood disorder. While Cole is dealing with a traumatic secret, Malcolm's got serious stuff going on at home. Ever since the shooting, his marriage has been falling apart. Things are so bad that Anna is eating alone and sleeping by herself. Even though Malcolm desperately wants to communicate with his wife, she just won't talk. Malcolm suspects she's angry because he's so wrapped up in Cole's case, but he feels cold is his shot at redemption. Still, his second chance might be ruining his love life. Things come to a head when Malcolm is late for an anniversary dinner. When he finally arrives at an Italian restaurant to meet Anna, he finds her sitting alone, looking miserable. After sliding into his chair, Malcolm apologizes for being late, but she won't say a word or make eye contact. He tries paying for the check, but Anna grabs it first and then walks away, leaving him dejected. Even worse, Malcolm catches his wife embracing another man. The two are on the verge of a kiss when Malcolm angrily punches a window. Of course, he takes off running before they see him, leaving only a cracked pain in his wake. As far as Anna is concerned, it's almost like Malcolm was never really there. The sixth sense is full of little clues for the major twist that's coming. For example, throughout the film, Malcolm is constantly trying to get into his office, which is down in his wine cellar. But every time he jables the red doorknob, it's locked. Cue Malcolm fumbling for his keys, a quick cut, and then he's instantly in the cellar. This might seem like standard movie editing, but it's important to note that we never see Malcolm open the door. Log that away for later. And then there's the mind-reading game. Cole comes home from school to find his mom and Malcolm silently waiting for him. Cole immediately goes quiet and waits for his mother to leave before looking at the doctor. Even then, he won't say a word, so Malcolm devises a mind-reading game to communicate with the kid. He'll guess facts about Cole's life, and if he gets something right, the boy will take one step forward. This let us learn some details about Cole, for instance, he doesn't believe Malcolm can help him. 
But is that because Cole doesn't trust psychologists, or is it something spookier? Cole's actions here are very telling. He refuses to speak to Malcolm until he's sure his mom is out of earshot. He even looks into the kitchen to make sure she's busy before playing the mind-reading game. It's almost like he doesn't want his mom to know he's talking with Malcolm. Is this the behavior of a troubled child, or does Cole know something about this guy we don't? Here's a hint. It's definitely the latter. Up until this point, the sixth sense has been coy about what's wrong with Cole. But when he attends a birthday party, the boy hears a frightening, angry voice coming from behind a thick, solid door. Cole is clearly freaked out, and things get worse when a group of bullies lock him inside the closet. The kid goes into panic mode, and when he finally escapes, Cole is so traumatized that he ends up in the hospital. And it's there, after several scenes of bonding with his psychologist, that Cole reveals his secret to Malcolm, dropping one of the all-time iconic movie lines, I see dead people. According to Cole, he sees ghosts everywhere, and over the next few scenes, he lays out some paranormal guidelines. Ghosts don't know they're dead, and they can't see each other. They only see what they want to see, which means they ignore proof that they're dead. Additionally, if a ghost gets angry or upset, the temperature drops and things get frosty, which is why it's always cold at Cole's house. Once Cole returns home, we finally get glimpses of the terrifying spirit world. There's a suicidal housewife in his kitchen, and a kid with his brains blown out wanders into Cole's bedroom. Even at school, Cole sees three old-timey farmers hanging from the rafters. The ghosts seem drawn to Cole, and whenever they arrive, he hides in a makeshift tent filled with stolen religious icons to keep the spirits at bay. After all, these ghosts say horrible, scary things, and sometimes they attack, leaving Cole scratched and bruised. With these gruesome ghosts around, it's no wonder Cole is a little screwed up. How do you solve a problem like Cole Sear? Well, at first, Malcolm believes his patient is suffering from schizophrenia. But as he digs into his research, the psychologist makes a shocking spiritual discovery. While going through audio recordings of old sessions with Vincent Gray, Malcolm hears a faint voice in the background. When he turns up the volume, he realizes there's someone else in the room, talking to Vincent in a foreign language and screaming, I don't want to die. That's when Malcolm realizes that both Vincent and Cole have been blessed slash cursed with the ability to see the dead. And now that he understands what's going on, Malcolm develops a theory that might help Cole. Maybe these ghosts aren't mean, Malcolm reasons. Maybe they just want someone to listen. Perhaps they need to complete an unfinished task before they can shuffle off this mortal coil, and maybe Cole should help them. It's quite a burden for a little boy, but Cole agrees to try. When a ghostly little girl with vomit pouring from her mouth shows up, Cole goes from terrified kid to phantom private eye. With Malcolm by his side, Cole the ghost detective takes a trip across town to visit the house of the sickly ghost girl. When the duo arrives, they discover a depressing funeral reception for the recently departed girl. But as Malcolm and Cole are exploring the house, Without anyone paying attention to Malcolm, you might notice. The ghost girl shows up and hands Cole the videotape. VHS in hand, Cole gives the tape to the little girl's dad. And when he pops it in the VCR, the dad sees a secret recording of his wife poisoning his daughter. It's a messed up case of Munchausen by proxy. But thanks to Cole, the little girl gets justice, saves her younger sister from a similar fate, and moves on to the next plane. For nine years, Cole Sear has seen ghosts, and for nine years, he's kept that a secret from his mom. He's worried she'll think he's a freak but now he's ready to come clean. Stuck in a traffic jam, Cole claims there's an accident up ahead, that a lady died in the wreck, and that she's standing right by his window. Lynn Sears freaked out by this, but things get even creepier when Cole lets her know that Grandma says hi. That's when Cole explains that his deceased grandmother visits him occasionally, and then he starts dropping information that only Lynn and her mom would know. In one of the film's most emotional moments, Cole delivers a brief message from his grandma to her daughter, every day. Those two words cause his mom to break down crying because, as we find out, Lynn once went to her mother's grave and asked, Do I make you proud? Now she finally knows the answer. Not only can Cole help the dead, but he also brings comfort to the living. This scene also lets us know that even if Malcolm is no longer his doctor, Cole is going to be okay. After all, his mom believes in his powers and will always be here for this little guy. But as for Malcolm, well, the dedicated doctor is in for one creepy surprise. Crow returns home where he finds his wife asleep with their wedding video playing. While still asleep, Anna asks her husband why he left her and drops Crow's wedding ring, which he suddenly discovers he has not been wearing. He remembers what Cole said about ghosts and realizes that he was actually killed by Vincent and was unknowingly dead the entire time he was working with Cole. Because of Cole's efforts, Crow's unfinished business, rectifying his failure to understand and help Vincent, is finally complete. Crow fulfills the second reason he returned, to tell his wife she was never second, and that he loves her. His goal complete. He is free to leave the world of the living. We hope you enjoyed our today's video. 
If you did like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest and interesting videos.